Traditionally, elderly people in Indonesia are cared for by their families. But that's not the case for the country's three million strong transgender or warrior community. They're often rejected by their families who are ashamed of them. Many elderly transgender people who used to survive as prostitutes end up begging on the streets. But now, perhaps the world's first old people's home for transgender people is being built on the outskirts of the Indonesian capital, Jakarta. This is an important daily ritual for 51-year-old Yuliana Sreta Blaut. She was born a man in a small village on the jungle-covered island of Papua. Her parents were both respected community teachers. There was no electricity in her village, and she'd never heard of anyone being gay or transgender. Ketika saya juga tidak mengerti pada waktu itu, karena saya merasa bahwa kok saya ini ada ada pemikiran yang aneh. Apa ini satu penyakit? Kenapa? Karena tiba-tiba itu saya bisa senang sama orang laki. It was not till she moved to the capital for university and she was invited to a famous transgender beat that she realized she wasn't alone. Dan di sana dia menceritakan bahwa nanti kamu akan menemukan bahwa banyak sekali orang yang seperti kami di sana yang tadinya tuh mereka tuh berwujud laki dan setelah mereka make up mereka akan cantik dan kemudian mereka tidak lagi mengeluarkan uang untuk laki-laki tetapi mereka akan dikasih uang untuk laki-laki. Dan kemudian saya ke sana apalagi dengan kekurangan saya yang saya tidak cantik saya kemudian di make up sama dia dan ada laki-laki yang menggoda saya dan ini saya merasa bahwa aku bahagia pada waktu itu. She became part of the estimated three million strong community of transgender, men who choose to live their lives as women. They're known as warrior in Indonesia, combining the words for man and woman. Warrior have a place on the fringes of Indonesian society. They're allowed to work as beauticians, entertainers, massage therapists, but most work as prostitutes on the streets. That's what 17-year-old Yuli ended up doing, selling herself near some railway tracks in the capital for nearly 20 years. It was during her time on the streets that Yuli heard her parents had died. Kakak saya sebabnya mencarikan saya pada waktu agar perbuatan kamu ibu jadi meninggal. Dan dia membenci saya dan dia mengatakan bahwa kamu harus pulang. Dan pada waktu saya juga diperlakukan dengan sangat keras. Saya mau ditembak, ditaruh pistol di sini dan mau ditembak. Kalau kamu nggak pulang, saya akan matiin kamu karena kamu memalukan keluarga. Jadi pada waktu itu, semua keluarga saya membenci saya dan hubungan itu putus. The way out was through education. Yuli enrolled herself in university and became the first transgender in Indonesia to gain a law degree from a leading Islamic university. It was a day to celebrate. Now she focuses on fighting for greater rights for the warrior community. Recently, she nominated herself to become a commissioner with Indonesia's top state human rights organization. Her community now calls her Mama Yuli, and she heads an association for the Indonesian warrior. As she approaches 60, she's now focusing her attention on the welfare of her aging friends. Orang menganggap bahwa mereka sudah tua dan tidak berguna. Untuk apa? Repotin kami saja. Jadi akhirnya memang mereka itu akhirnya hidup seperti apa adanya. Mereka jadi tukang minta-minta atau mereka jadi tukang pijit atau mereka jadi istilahnya apa saja yang bisa mereka lakukan untuk mempertahankan hidup. Jadi aku pikir bahwa ini perlu kita tangani. So she's turning her home on the outskirts of the city into quite possibly the world's first old people's home for the transgender. Yuli already has an 800 long waiting list. And at the moment, three people are living with her, including Mbak Yoti. The others say Yoti has four boyfriends on the go. Yoti's family tried hard to change her. 
itu lihat matahari tidur tuh di kas speaker dan matahari di atas tapi belum kapo kan kalau bapak baik mama baik enggak dua-duanya sama kenceng itu kasur punya mukul-mukul tuh yang biasa kasur dipukul tuh rot yang dari rotan itu hal-hal dipukul pakai itu When they found him cuddling in a room with a man, they gathered the extended family together and kicked him out. Oke itu pas malam hujan 12 malam tuh sampai setengah satu hujan tuh turun. Kamu keluar. Kedua. Bisa lo begini ya. Bagas aku. Kamu mau mati, kamu mau hidup, kamu enggak boleh ketemu aku. Yoshi was still a teenager. To survive, she taught herself how to cook and worked as a chef on ships and has traveled across Asia. She now helps with the daily running of the old people's home. 73-year-old Mbak Shri says she warns young warrior that they can't live off their looks forever. Saya bilang kamu jangan fokus di jalanan. Orang di jalan itu ada batasnya. Lebih baik kamu hobinya apa? Misalnya dagang ya dagang, kerja-kerja yang benar gitu. Recently Yuli's brother who threatened to shoot her came to visit the house. Dan dia mengatakan bahwa luar biasa. Kemudian dia mengelilingi tempat ini dan dia cuma menangis. Dia mengatakan bahwa aku nggak nyangka kamu bisa seperti itu, kamu berjuang. Orang banyak yang mengatakan kepada saya bahwa adik kamu sekarang hebat. Kemudian tahun kemarin aku pulang ke daerahnya dia di tempat dia bertugas dan dia senang sekali menerima saya walaupun aku dengan seorang waria. Dia mengatakan bahwa ini adik saya, tapi gak lama kemudian dia meninggal. They still need more money to realize their dream and are hoping that a donor will come forward so that the first floor of the old people's home will be completed later this year to provide a much needed home for the elderly warrior who would otherwise end up on the streets.